Coach, you've mentioned before you, you kind of want to see how your team responds to adversity early in the season so they can grow from that experience. Not to look too far ahead down the road, but just talk about the challenge of facing an Akron team and then 48 hours later coming back here and, and playing what looks to be a pretty good Pine Bluff team. Yeah, we talked about it a lot in the off season that we had a very challenging schedule. It looks to be maybe a little more challenging than we even thought you know, in July and August with the results, uh, the early season results. But we had a little bit of adversity, obviously, Monday. We're down in half in our home opener and played much better in the second half. But, you know, that's just a taste of it. We're going to have uh, way bigger challenges and tougher uh, leads to overcome and uh, et cetera. So uh, we haven't faced any major foul issues yet or anything of that nature. And, um, we're going to not play in someone else's barn, but we're going to have to play away from uh, the friendly confines for the first time. So um, got a lot of respect for Akron, uh, very well coached. Obviously another NCAA tournament team last year uh, with a good core group of players back from that team. And they're a program, at least right now, that doesn't play a ton of guys. You know, They rely on um, two guys to do the bulk of their scoring, and then they only play about seven, eight guys. Uh, on normal nights, at least that's what we've seen thus far and what we've heard. So um, we'll have our hands full. You know, they got the, the two kids, uh, the one kid out front, Castaneda, and then the big kid around the basket, Freeman. They're both uh, very accomplished players, and uh, Castaneda can, you know, shoot it, bounce it, just scores it in a variety of ways, and then Freeman's just a load. I mean, he is so skilled around the basket with the right and the left, and he was the defensive player of the year last year. Um, so it'll be a heck of a matchup for, for Tolu and the rest of our bigs uh, around the basket uh, Friday night. We'll keep it to coaches right and go to Steph. You mentioned there, you know, just playing away from home, obviously a, a neutral site. What have you learned in, in the past from your coaching experience about, you know, what, what knowledge you can gain about a team, you know, this early on playing in an environment similar to an NCAA tournament game? Yeah, I love going on the road. I love uh, being with our guys uh, where we're, it's just us. You know, you get to know each other better. You know, we're, we're in a hotel and we're having meetings and, you know, obviously it's just us. And so the normal people they would talk to, you know, when practice is over, uh, aren't around. And so uh, I just think that relationships are, are formed and, um, and deeper level when we're together like that. We're, we're eating more as a team. Um, we're just, you know, hanging out more as a squad. We're traveling with one another, and um, I, I just, I do. I love uh, seeing where we're at, and um, you know, we've, I've been around other programs, uh, part of other programs. We, we've normally had a lot of success on the road, and I think that's probably the true test of how good your team is. Is how you perform away from home. I mean, most teams, uh, at least the good teams, win the majority of their games at home, but the great teams are ones that can go on the road and and find ways to, you know, overcome what the road, you know, brings. And um, so it's a, it's a heck of an early season test for us. And uh, I'll be anxious, uh, just like you all, to see how we perform. We'll go to the second row to coaches right into Theo. I mean, you mentioned Freeman. He is 6'7". Their biggest rotation player is 6'9". Are you starting to find yourself with, you know, size advantages? And how much, if at all, does that matter? We'll see, you know. Uh, I don't take a lot of stock in those measurements. I mean, sometimes people inflate them and some people deflate them. Um, and to be honest, it's about how they play. Like the Freeman kid, if you would have told me after watching film initially and not knowing what his uh, measurements were, I would have not believed you because he plays bigger than that. He plays stronger than that. He's got an energy about him, a toughness about him. He's been very well schooled on both ends of the floor. Um, but, you know, I, I'll know more when we're on the floor and we're at, uh, you know, their level and, and, and see if, if we do indeed have uh, a physical advantage. But at the end of the day, you know, to be honest with you, most of the teams that I've had, other than my last team, um, weren't that big and physical. We were always, you know, Ken Palm has all those metrics, right? And we were always toward the bottom in just simple height. Uh, across the country, and you know, we used it as a you know chip on our shoulder type deal. I, I'm not sure where where we're at this year. I haven't looked uh, that closely on where we rank amongst the other teams. Because in the end of the day, uh, most coaches will tell you, and you know, it really doesn't matter. 
We'll go to Jack here in the middle, second row. Uh, Coach, last week we saw the Bulldog Initiative get an influx of donations. I guess, how big is that to get that backing from the fan base? And how important do you think NIL is in building a program in this kind of new era of college athletics? You know, I think it's been well documented that the transfer portal along with NIL has changed the landscape of uh, at least college basketball and a lot of other sports as well, and it's no different for us. So um, certainly appreciate you know, all those folks that um, are willing and able to help um, move our program further along, but um, you know, it's, it's a part of, of uh, winning right now. It's a part of what every program across the country is trying to secure to make uh, you know, the choices um, you know, for these student athletes that they have to make um, just to have um, a better situation you know, for, for our potential Bulldogs. So, um, I don't spend a lot of time thinking about it right now, but I know there are a lot of people working behind the scenes to try to make that happen. Again, questions for Coach, raise your hand. Let's get it back over to Steph. Uh, I was curious your thoughts. Uh, around here, obviously, people are you know aware of Brandon Walker and the work he does at Barstool, and there's a lot of guys that have you know gone into you know making this invitational happen, I guess. What are your impressions of, of what they've done and, and how they're kind of putting together this event for the first time? So far, so good. They've been um, very communicative. They were out here a week or so ago um, and spent a few hours around our, our program uh, with different type of pregame interviews, pregame videos. Um, you know, fortunately for us, we have uh, uh, the, the, what would be the right phrase, um, the veto ability uh, of anything that um, any interviews that they've done and things of that nature. But um, our kids had a lot of fun with it. I had fun with it. Um, they were professional. They were really good. Like I said, they're going to have a lot of access um, to us. When, once we land in Philadelphia, they're going to be around um, that, the night we get in, the next day, shoot around. You know, So um, you know, I believe in access and, and letting people kind of under the hood, if you will, um, to get a, you know, closer glimpse of what's going on with us and how we do business and uh, I think you're going to see quite a bit of that um, this weekend and um, hopefully you know we'll have a decent crowd I know none of the four schools uh, or at least none of the four schools are that close in proximity so who knows if that'll make a big impact or not we'll go to Danny P to coaches left Coach, I know Tolu has a capability of getting a double-double every time he steps on the court for a game. How satisfying was it to see him get one right out of the gates? Yeah, if he would he left some meat on the ball, he's got to make his free throws. Um, that wasn't uh, up to par. And uh, knowing him like I do, even in this short time period I've been around him, I know he'll be working on that, and that'll be something that bothers him. And, um, you know, it's a luxury to have someone you can throw the ball to around the basket that one – you know, can, can back his man down and, and have a, an array of uh, moves to, you know, potentially put the ball in the basket or get fouled or, you know, attract a double team and, and get the other team in rotation. And we've really been working since we've arrived on him passing the ball out of the post uh, in anticipation of people throwing different types of coverages at him. So he'll be prepared for whatever the defense um, throws at him and we'll have to adjust each and every game to how they defend him. Got time for a couple more. We'll go to Theo again. Just curious if you had any tips about Starkville for Coach Bartz and the soccer team coming in here for the NCAA tournament on Friday. Yeah, it was quite the matchup uh, on a personal level. Yeah. Uh, I've talked to you know, I'm friends with Coach Bartz and his wife, Chan. They were great friends, of, uh, still are great friends of Sherry and I. And I uh, spent quite a bit of time with him uh, back in Las Cruces. And then certainly got to know uh, James and his wife since we arrived. And I asked um, you know James if he knew Bart, uh, Rob. And, uh, he said he didn't, and, and uh, I just basically told him that, man, you guys would, would get along great, and um, you're very similar in personality, et cetera. And, um, so I bowed to both of them. I wouldn't you know, share any trade secrets um, that I have on, on each program, which, trust me, I, I couldn't help either one, even if I wanted to. I don't know enough about the game, nor would I even try to think that I could um, give any sort of tips to another coach about, about his, his sport or his industry. But um, unfortunately, because the game being Friday at, at 3 o'clock and 
I uh, would have loved to have been here and been able to spend some time with, with uh, Coach Bartz and, and the other folks that are on that staff that we know. And certainly we'll be uh, watching it from afar, um, you know, as we get ready uh, to play our game. We'll wrap it up with Paul. Being the early season, I'm sure there were things that you saw the other night that frustrated you that, that you're hoping to get better at as, as the season goes along. But was there anything looking back on film that kind of surprised you that something they did better than you thought they may do or somebody in particular? Not really. Uh, we got a pretty high standard for our expectations for our team, certainly for our individuals. And, um, you know, I don't think anyone exceeded what our expectation would be. Uh, as a team, I thought our defensive rebounding wasn't what it needed to be. I thought we did a decent job on the offensive end in terms of crashing and keeping the ball alive and giving ourselves some second and third chance opportunities. But uh, on the other end, we just uh, weren't, you know, assignment correct with um, checking out and getting involved and having a, a gang rebounding mentality that is required if you want to be a good defensive rebounding team. So it's something that will be addressed today and we're going to work on it for the next couple of days because uh, we're not going to have that size advantage each and every night like we had against uh, Corpus Christi. And uh, you know, our kids need to understand that. We have to be, like I said, assignment correct and do a better job in the backboards.